Thank you. Uh, thank you, Senator Haggerty. Tennessee is recognized. Thank you, Chairman Brown, Ranking Member Toomey, and thanks all of our panelists for being here today. I want to follow up on the line of questions that my colleagues have brought up, particularly around the astonishing set of events that led to the collapse of FTX uh, last week. I think a number of people are calling for um, this incident to be a, a rationale or a reason to um, call the cryptocurrency regime nothing but a Ponzi scheme, that we should um, regulate it uh, very swiftly, put heavy-handed regulations in place to, to deal with it. Several of you seem to agree that regulation is appropriate, but I, I want to acknowledge that some of the blame for this catastrophe has got to be placed on lawmakers here in the United States, and it shouldn't go unaddressed. The fact of the matter is that crypto, much like all of finance, isn't beholden to a specific country or a specific legal system. And by not acting, and by failing to provide legal clarity here in the United States, Congress only incentivizes activity to migrate outside of our country's borders. Further, it's important to recognize that whatever happened with a bad actor running a centralized exchange and defrauding customers, that had nothing to do with the technology underpinning crypto itself. We shouldn't take the wrong message from what happened last week. No amount of poorly considered knee-jerk overregulation here in the U.S. would have prevented a foreign domicile company like FTX from doing what it did. Instead, we should focus on accelerated but thoughtful efforts to provide clear incentives for companies to domicile here under laws that would prevent the billions of dollars of losses like those just incurred by FTX's unsuspecting customers. So Acting Comptroller Sue, I'd like to come to you. Last month, you said in a speech that you were also concerned about the lack of clarity in crypto regulation here in the United States. Do you agree that with a clear regulatory construct in America, more cryptocurrency companies would be encouraged to operate here rather than offshore, where regulatory frameworks are obviously inadequate to prevent large-scale fraud? It could. I'm more concerned, though, there are some basic foundational elements of the cryptocurrency technology and the industry, which are not sound currently. And so regardless of the regulation, uh, there are some issues with, for instance, ownership is not clear. And so if you don't have clarity about what you own, then you know, a, a market where property rights are unclear is a market built on sand. Mm. Th those issues are outside of any kind of regulatory discussion. And those are currently, the, the state of the crypto industry is not mature. And I think that's a factor that has to be taken into account uh, as we kind of work through what, what to do next. Yeah, from, from my view, the maturity of our markets, though, and our regulatory system is much stronger than some of the markets where these companies are domiciled right now. And our view, uh, if, if I understand all of you sharing a view that regulation is appropriate, is that, that an appropriate level of regulation that would give clarity and would help us deal with this would be more appropriate happening here onshore than, again, pushing this overseas. Well, at least speaking as a bank regulator, to the extent that the activity takes place in the national banking system, it has to be safe, sound, and fair. People need to understand that, and we need to make sure that we maintain that level, uh, that standard for the activity. Agreed, and look forward to continue working with you toward that end. Vice Chairman Barkin, I turn to you for, for a moment, please. The Fed's own stress test results and financial stability reports recognize the strength of the U.S. banking system, not to mention the fact that our banks just supported our economy through the pandemic. And yet it seems that you're planning to layer yet more costly reforms on our banking system just as the U.S. navigates a recession and as the Fed fights the highest inflation that we've seen in generations. Part of this plan appears to be by raising capital requirements on mid-sized banks with a heightened leverage requirement. Under current market conditions, these requirements seem inconsistent with S21-55 and the statutory mandate for capital requirements to be countercyclical. So my question for you, Vice Chairman Barr, why is the Fed reversing course now and considering punitive new leverage and capital requirements for regional banks that could impede their ability to support the economy? Wouldn't you agree that raising capital requirements now is not countercyclical? Uh, thank you, Senator. We're, we're uh, undertaking a holistic review of capital requirements for firms. Uh, that includes uh, issues about the globally systemically important bank surcharge, the countercyclical capital buffer, the enhanced supplementary leverage ratio, stress testing, and the like, to make sure that the capital rules are fitting well together. We're not trying to design a, a capital system for tomorrow morning. We're, we're trying to think about what the capital rules should be over the cycle. So that involves, uh, if we change the rules, uh, it, it, undergoing a, a proposal and then a final rule and then an implementation period. And just, just for clarity, I'm running out of time. I just want to ask this and make it clear. Would increasing capital requirements right now in the environment that we're in, amidst a recession, 
be pro-cyclical or counter-cyclical? Well, uh, uh, Senator, in, in, in technical terms, there's not a, not a recession right now. We are in a slower period of economic growth. Uh, I, if you I, ask the people of Tennessee, I can tell you we're in very tough times. Is very this tough time, times. Is I this agree. a time to be following the rule of, of, of law and yeah. have our requirements be counter-cyclical? Or do you want to accelerate the process and push us further into recession? Amazing As I said, I think, I think it's important that we have capital rules that are good for the whole cycle, and that's, that's the approach that I'm trying to take. Well, I, I certainly hope that you will take strong note of the fact that I'm concerned about any move that might be pro-cyclical in a situation that we're heading into a recession, which I believe we are. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you.